And so let's start off with Monera. Monera, I already swam you through them a bit. They are the prokaryotes, meaning that they do not have a well-defined nucleus. They have two subtypes, the bacteria and the archaea. Bacteria are like everywhere. I hate to break this to you, but there are more single-celled organisms than human beings on this planet. They actually invade you in a nice way, actually. Uh, they form 80% of the cells in your body. And don't worry, they're actually okay to have around, occasionally useful as well, as they hang out in your digestive system and aid in digestion. For example, some of them also help in fixing nitrogen, which is super useful to plants and helps them manufacture food. And then some of them are really harmful and can cause some diseases. Archaea and bacteria are called prokaryotes, as I mentioned before, because prokaryotic means before nucleus. And true to their name, they do not have a well-defined nucleus. In fact, they don't have any organelles at all. But they do have genetic information in the form of DNA and RNA. And yes, they came before the eukaryotes. And it's a fact that all life from the planet has evolved from prokaryotes. And our oldest, weirdest relatives are archaea. Nothing dates back more than archaea, traces of which have been found 3.8 billion years ago. This is just a billion years after the Earth was formed and the planet was bombarded with comets, meteors, UV radiation and stuff. And still, you had the archaea hanging out there as if nothing ever happened. The Earth has calmed down a lot since then and archaea actually misses all this violence and because of that, they're still found in the most extreme forms of environment on Earth including volcanic hot springs, oil wells, and deep down in the ocean in hydrothermal vents. One type of archaea, in fact, is found in temperatures of 113 degrees centigrade, not Fahrenheit Celsius, because 100 degrees centigrade is actually, you know, the temperature water boils at. Bacteria are as widespread as archaea, but not that ancient. Fossil records show them to be around 1.5 billion years ago, but some records are also there that they're there for 3 billion years. They are also super, super adaptable and come in so many shapes, sizes and colors. Rods, cylinders, circles, coils. You have bacteria, you actually have them all. Some of them are parasitic, which means that they're going to give you a really, really tough time by causing diseases and make you immediately run for that antibiotic. And since there are so many types of bacteria, scientists have come up with a basic way of classifying them based on the way the cell membranes react to a stain called the gram stain. So one type of bacteria with thick walls called the gram-positive bacteria has a huge group with streptococcus, staphylococcus, bacilli, clostridium, and listeria, to name a few. And they are responsible for deadly diseases like leprosy and tuberculosis. And then you have the gram-negative bacteria, which have thin walls, which do not stain with the gram stain. They help fix nitrogen in the atmosphere and help the plants grow. And then there are some which actually cause food poisoning. Cyanobacteria are the only bacteria that use photosynthesis to make their own food. And since they are such ancient forms, they look alien-like and not really like life the way you think about it. These guys are so adaptable and it's probably their adaptability that has allowed them to hang around for so many years. But you know what? There's no denying it, but all multicellular organisms like this banyan tree or this lion cub or the zebra or you and me have all descended from this unicellular organism long, long, long time ago. And they haven't changed much in the last few billion years. They've liked the way they look and well settled down generations that way and did not feel a need to change. Some of them evolved through millions and millions of years and formed multicellular organisms. And that's what we will look at today. We will climb up that evolutionary ladder together and see where exactly all these changes happened and how we all have actually come into being.